And welcome back to another episode of Boss Your Business, where I expose you to how my guests build the business of their dreams, or maybe have been through nightmares, who knows? Um, today, I am actually joined by, oh my God, how long have we known each other? We've known each other as associates for quite a while, but it took us a little bit of work to get Ian Anderson Gray on here because... He is nearly on the other side of the world. He is actually more over in my old stomping grounds. And to introduce you guys, Ian is the founder of the Confident Life Marketing Academy and the host of the Confident Life Marketing Podcast. Yes, we will have links in the description as always. He helps entrepreneurs to level up their impact, authority, and profits by using live video confidently. You're also the founder of Seriously Social, a blog focused on live video and social media tools. You're an international speaker, trainer, teacher, and consultant. You have a passion for making the techno babble of live video and social media marketing easy to understand. As well as being a geek husband and dad to two kids, Ian is also a professional singer and lives near Manchester in the UK. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. It's good I to be. Like, I'm, I'm glad we finally got got here. And it took us. It took us zones. a little bit. It took. It took <laughs> it us did. a little bit. I know. I think. But we we're here. I think we actually ran for the. We probably ran into each other for the first time. Social media marketing world here in San Diego. So it's been yeah. a few years. It's been before the shit hit the fan. <laughs> yes. Now. As my audience knows, I always get a little bit of information from my guests beforehand. And this whole professional singer thing, I think I kind of knew that, but I kind of didn't. <clears throat> Which brings us to my always most favorite question. How did you get here? What's what's Ian's Anderson Gray's grow up story? Oh my goodness. Like I'm sure you get so many weird stories on, on your podcast. That's why uh, it's my favorite it, question. Like, you know, what we do today did not exist, like even five years mm -hmm. ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But like I, when I was at school, I, I was passionate about a few things. I loved music. My, my mom was an opera singer. Uh, music was a very much a part of our house. Um, and I used to play the cello. I used to sing. I was just like, I joined everything. I was, I loved performing. Now, even though I've always been an introvert, getting on stage, I somehow feel free. And I was, um, and it's all about communication and, and mm -hmm. communicating a story or an emotion. And there's something special about that. So that was one thing I was passionate about, but I was also loved technology. And back in the early eighties, this is when computers, you know, they were still beeping. I was still beeping when we wanted to go on the internet back in those days. Wait, <laughs> well, when did the, the internet, internet didn't out? even exist? It is the internet didn't even exist, really. You know, and I've got a little my first ever computer behind me, uh, which I, I used to like program, and and I was fascinated by that. And then the internet became a thing, and I went to music college to train to be a professional singer. I was singing on stage, and. The two kind of came together. I, I started building websites for musicians, but it was really when I set up my blog in 2011 and I was interested in social media and uh, social media and technology. And I was looking for a platform to help with social media. And I came across Hootsuite mm -hmm. and I was really frustrated. Well, I wasn't really frustrated with it, but I was frustrated by the content out there because there was so much content out there that said how amazing it was. And I was looking, well, okay, what are the downsides to it? So I started to write a blog post looking at the downsides of Hootsuite, uh, which became seven reasons not to use Hootsuite. And that went completely viral. I, as To cut a long story short, I ended up uh, being asked to speak at Social Media Marketing World on social media. Fast forward a few years, I was on stage at Social Media Marketing World with other musicians mm -hmm. like Molly Mahoney, who you probably know yep. very well. Yeah, love and, Molly. And Steve Dotto. I was thinking, what on earth am I doing? Like, I'm on stage at a social media conference singing, like we're singing, <laughs> putting on these parody musicals. What on earth am I doing? And at the same time, live video, Facebook had launched Facebook Live. And I had this kind of epiphany moment uh, where I realized I could merge my teaching background, my performance background, and my mm -hmm. love of technology 
into a business uh, which became Confident Live, uh, Confident Live Marketing Academy. Uh, I've got this passion for helping people who are maybe more introverted, who are scared of getting in front of the camera, uh, mm -hmm. helping them communicate because they've got everyone has a message. But also the technology can be scary. And I empathize with that, that, that feeling of trepidation. So all of those things came together. Um, and I, yeah, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey speaking at these conferences, helping people all around the world. I could go on, but I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> I love how, how you brought it all together. And I think that's kind of like the common thread with us entrepreneurs where it's like, yes, the stories are fun where, oh my God, you did what, where, how, wait a second you learned for this stuff so this is why i always love the, the the question because you never know the story that comes out of it yet it seems like every single one of my guests at some point ends up rounding up all of the things they have done and it's like a nice package and suddenly it makes all sense and it all fits together no matter how weird it initially yeah. is like how does that fit together and suddenly it just nicely fits it it does nicely fit i just wanted to say one thing though because it's not like i don't want to kind of paint this rosy picture like it was all amazing i mean i don't know whether you're going to ask me this anyway but the mm -hmm. the thing i will say is that i have had some feelings of guilt like i trained as a professional singer and now i'm not doing it so much so there's that feeling inside of me well like what was all that for like and, and i know that i'm i'm doing something really amazing and i'm helping business owners but still there can sometimes be that guilt um and i need to this is why i've been in the last two or three years i've been on this mindset journey trying to sort out my head to think to say to myself look ian like all of that training was for, for, that was the, for for now this is, is a purpose and we've all got different seasons in our lives as well so my professional singing was for then now it is uh now i'm helping my kids with their singing and i'm also mm -hmm. able to put it into the business so yeah it can be hard but it's been so amazing too so i just wanted to just add that as well to the mix and i love that you brought up the the mental work and the growth work that you are doing that you have been doing um are you open to sharing what kind of modalities and what kind of work you have done to to really get yourself to the point of and because I think we all struggle with it. It has been a big work on myself too, where mm. there's imposter syndrome, there is guilt, there's all those negative feelings of, oh my God, I put that much money in that education and I was supposed to be this, or I thought it, it's going to be that. Um, what is some work or, or modalities or practices that have helped you, let's be honest, to get out of the bullshit? <laughs> because in the end we know logically we know it's it's yeah. it's bullshit it all fits together but that doesn't necessarily yeah. help with the emotions definitely well so there's something wonderful about working for yourself like this the entrepreneurial lifestyle it, it's amazing that freedom that we get but also that is you working on your own. And sometimes we can then get sucked into our own heads. And this is why we need people so much. I've just come back from a conference in, in Boston and I was just reminded by the fact that we need each other. Like, yes, it's amazing to work on our own, but we need the help of other people. We need cheerleaders in our lives to not just encourage us. Boy, do we need to encouragement. We all need that encouragement. And if, if you can, if there's somebody in your life, somebody that has in, who has made a big impact on you, reach out to them and, and tell them that because oh, you'll God, be surprised yes. how many times or how little they have been told that. So that's 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 the first thing. So, yeah, um, we need those people in our lives, but also we need people to tell us the truth as well, because sometimes we need those harsh truths as well, which is which is kind of scary, but it needs to be done in a caring way. So I. I've had a big journey. Um, I've I've suffered from imposter sy syndrome big time, a lot of guilt, um, to be honest, self-loathing, thinking I'm just no good, and on complete lies in my head. Uh, comparison syndrome, comparing ourselves with others, oh God, yes. is a huge problem. Like, let's face it, most people struggle from that, struggle with that. Most entrepreneurs do. I was also uh, diagnosed with ADHD of two or three years ago, probably like most entrepreneurs, but that made a big 
impact on me. This this knowledge that actually the guilt that I'm feeling, this uh, the feeling of procra this procrastination, the, the all these kind of things, there is a reason for it. And then, and then that gave me, it took away a lot of the guilt and it's enabled me then to look at strategies on how to counteract that. So I think self-discovery, understanding how your brain works, what isn't working, and then coming up with a strategy of how to counteract those things. And the big thing for me, yes, I've done mastermind, I've joined masterminds in the past. I meet up with friends of mine in the entrepreneurial space regularly. But the big thing for me was working with a business coach. Now I have worked with business coaches in the past, but it's finding the right one. And the one I've been working with this yeah. year has been amazing. So for me, she's the, the important thing for me is she is non judging, she's encouraging yet she is not afraid to tell me when I'm stuck in my own head. <laughs> and and then it's it's um, working on the thing that we're working on at the moment, which I'm really excited about is she kind of calls it an emotional toolkit. So like the times when I'm in my head, I'm thinking, Ian, you, you may as well give up. It's not good. You, you know, you know, those kind of negative things that are happening in your head. It's well, what do you do in those in that state? So it's having a toolkit. Well, if, if I'm thinking that, first of all, I know it's not true. Second of all, what do I do about it? And so that has been amazing. Uh, and I highly recommend that kind of strategy. Love it. Yeah, I, I'm on a similar path right now where building that self-esteem. I, I am somebody that was highly focused on external validation. I, yeah. I needed somebody to tell me I did well. We, we know how well that goes. It just goes so long, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then combined with the imposter syndrome, I'm not good enough and all the things. And it's been interesting for me, one of those tools to even prevent from getting to this point for me has been doing the things I said I would do. Yeah. So now suddenly I'm not over promising myself something because I'm going to be really conscious of the things that I tell myself I'm going to be doing. But I also have now that drive of going to the gym in the morning because I told myself I'm going to do it. Finishing my book yesterday because I said I'm going to write the last chapter this weekend. And mm. it's been interesting looking back on implementing this practice where I'm like, I know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> and there comes a pride with that of, yeah, I went to the gym. Yes, I went four times to the gym last week because I said I'm going to do it. Mm. And I love that you brought up strategies, meaning having that toolbox of, okay, I know what that pattern looks like. I get this idea, potentially even figure out the trigger. I just browsed Instagram again for an hour. Guess what? The trigger is going to come that I'm not as good as everybody else. We then start realizing those triggers. We see the strategy that we ran, looking at Instagram, feeling like crap. Now I'm going to just loathe and eat all the crap and stay on the couch. We see the strategy, right? We all have a variation of that. But when you see that strategy initially and you've worked on building that toolbox, now you can cut in. Oh, yeah, um, hmm, I, I, I'm half an hour in into it into scrolling through Instagram reels. Let's cut off because I really don't want to feel like that. What am I going to do? Let's go half an hour for a walk, take the dog out, whatever it is. So yes, I love that you brought that up, having that toolbox, seeing those strategies, becoming aware of it and, and cutting into this. Mm. With all of your work, personal mindset, business, what is business now? You just mentioned you were just in Boston, which was Creator Camp from Ecamm. Love them over there. Um, what allowed you to just take take pretty much a week off, close to a week, and nothing burned up in flames? How how does your yeah. business work nowadays? Well, I'm in a bit of a transitional period at the moment because I'm. That's what another thing I've been working with my business coach on is diversifying my revenue streams. So traditionally, my revenue streams have been very much like a big thing has been affiliate marketing, not deliberately, but uh, I've tools like Ecamm, StreamYard, uh, Agora Pulse, those kind of tools um, 
when I've been talking about those tools uh, online, other blog posts and videos, affiliate marketing has been a big part of that uh, and brand ambassadorships as well. So those kind of tick along in the background. So like taking a week off as long as I'm pl I've planned, uh, then it's okay. And I have a team. I've got a couple of VAs who help me with that. They've also helped me create standard operating procedures. So we've got if 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 I go away for a few days and I don't check my emails, you know, we they know what to do. It's all fine. So, like I would love to say I'm a highly organized person. I would say I'm I always want to be a highly organized person. But I but I have put I I get people to come into my business and help structure that and put it into place. Now I'm not. They keep me organized. They keep me accountable because my my zone of genius is coming up with creative ideas mm -hmm. and and connecting with, with my my clients um and if i spend all my time trying to kind of be organized and uh then it's it's that's gonna not work for me so they help me be organized and actually there's no stress it's great uh and the other thing i will say is that has really helped with this is building those relationships over the years so first of all the the content that i create i focus on creating really high quality content i go into a huge amount of detail in my blog posts and my videos. Um, but I've also gone out of my way to connect with people at conferences. Even though I'm an introvert, going to these kind of conferences and seeking out people to have these amazing in-depth conversations with people over the years has been amazing. And I think that's how I've got to know the people at Ecamm, the people at other uh, tools, the other, other conferences. Uh, and that's really been amazing. And that's op opened loads of opportunities to me uh, as well. And I think we are pretty similar on that where it's that that extroverted introvert of hey, I, I love yeah. being alone at home and you all leave me alone I, as much as I love you. <laughs> but then going to a conference knowing you get to bathe in somebody else's energy, you get to to chat up to nerd out to talk about all the things and it's just different don't get me wrong i love a zoom call especially when you are like a 15 hour flight on the other side of the world <laughs> yeah yeah but it's different even for us introverts when when we get to be in person with other people and i'm like we are lucky enough that we were talking in the green room about this guys where there is usually also fringe events happening so even if you feel overwhelmed with the amount of people that social media marketing world used to be in the in the past or um, VidCon, huge amounts of people, you can easily either way join fringe events, do a dinner with the people you want to meet and invite them in and also get that a little bit smaller or find a quiet corner in the hallway. Most of these events actually give you the recording so you don't necessarily have to go to the session to learn what they are teaching yeah and it's like i'm i was after COVID, i was ready for in-person events again and i'm like i've been living online before this was a thing so i feel you on that one it's, yeah and it's like i it's weird like when i go to these events i be, it's almost like i become an extrovert i i don't i'm not because at the end of it i tend to crash but what i always mm -hmm. recommend if people are going to go to an event do your research first, prepare first, like reach out to people in person so that you can get all that pesky small talk out of the way. You know, ask people, get, go on a Zoom call, ask them what the weather's like with them, get that out of the way. So when you meet in person, you can then actually get to the proper stuff and, and get into the deep conversations. And that's that's been amazing. So like when you go to these events, I find like like at the Ecom event last, last week, uh, I was just on, I felt like I was like, full of energy because of that and it came home mm -hmm. and i was so excited about all these things so yeah connect with people beforehand so that you can get even more out of it and also don't be you know if you are an introvert and if you do need to get that downtime that's okay that's fine you're not the only one just just be yourself <laughs> It's okay to say no. Seriously, guys, it's okay to say no. It's like, especially with big events that go multiple days. Yeah. The first time I've done it, it, it I was I was afraid to say no to certain events. I just jumped <laughs> everywhere and I only said no if, if times overlap. 
believe me, it's like now I'm like, guys, sorry, I'll meet you for lunch tomorrow. There is so many yeah. opportunities at these yeah. events and just do it. Now, your relationships and the things you have done actually got you in a project that was finalized this June. So if you guys in listening and watching, Ian is part of the amazing marketing, the most amazing marketing book ever, which was um, spearheaded from Michael Schaefer and friends. Oh, look at that. You even got the copy in hand. <laughs> I am assuming you guys. So I let Ian tell, tell the story. I'm assuming you got into this book because of the relationship, you relationships you built at conferences and online. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like Mark is Mark Schaefer is one of the most amazing people. Uh, yeah, going back to, I think it was either 2012 or 2013, I went to my first ever marketing social media conference. Like, I don't know, what, I, I kind of vaguely knew what marketing was, but not really. And I went to this conference because I was started to be seen as, I was talking about social media, I was talking about like Hootsuite, as I said. I went to this conference in Wales, in the UK, and this guy called Mark Schaefer was there and he was, and he was, he was doing like a whole workshop and I was blown away by the guy. And not only that, he was like a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. And then I met him at social media marketing world. And then we went on, we went on holiday or vacation, you know, we call it holiday in the UK. And we went, we went to, uh, we went to uh, North Carolina and I just happened to be saying to Mark, like we were doing that. He said, you should come over to, you should come over to my house. You should. And I was thinking, oh, he's just trying to be nice. And then I've realized since that, when Mark says that kind of thing, he means it. So means it. we went over to his house and we spent some time with him. And he's always been, he's the kind of person who's always there for you. And then I, I joined his Rise community. And th 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 there's this idea of writing a book with his community, the Rise community. And I've always wanted to write a book, but the idea of actually writing a whole book has always kind of scared me. So he came up with the idea of, all but getting about 30 plus authors to write a chapter and he asked me to write the chapter on live streaming so i did and it's been the most amazing experience it's actually been it there was it was quite challenging because it went through an editor uh it had to be i had to, had to change it a little bit and then but then mm -hmm. we we did a little audio chapter for audible and the the cover's been done by um ai and and just the whole process and yeah, it's been so exciting. It's been wonderful to be part of. Yeah, I I have I have to tell you, I, writing a chapter rather than a whole book, I, I agree with you. I just finalized my last <laughs> chapter of the book that was in the works for two years. Oh, I love this timing of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not only just from the side of writing a book. Because every, everybody told me, just write a book, it's easy, just self-publish oh, yeah. it on Amazon. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. um, people, I love you, but you have no idea what you're talking about. At least not when it's when it's a how-to book where you have a lot of screenshots and writing. The, the formatting behind it. Yeah. I'm not going to get on my soapbox here. I already did that on Instagram It's yesterday. not just the writing, it's the bit after, <laughs> it's the promotion. It's It's, you know, it's the whole thing. And so having 36 people plus yep. mark that makes a difference and so like now will i write a book all my i'm not so sure and now i know <laughs> that it is there's so much that goes into it but yeah I, I i i think but again going back to what i said before you know yes being an entrepreneur working on your own having that freedom is amazing but this is actually when coming together with other people makes a massive difference. And so one thing that we I've been working with my business coach, I've been, I've been working a lot with AI to help me construct new ideas and new revenue streams. And I kind of came up with the idea that in a way is like my intelligent friend who's mm -hmm. guiding me through that. Not on its own, I've still got to have my brain. Uh, for my different revenue streams, we're coming up with the idea of having different groups of intelligent friends to help me. So it might be AI, it might be my friend Jeff C, who's going to support me with 
one particular endeavor. It might be uh, I met Amanda Robinson, uh, who's in doing all the Facebook stuff. Yeah. And so we've talked about collaborating, having a group of people that can help you on your way, you can retain your freedom and your autonomy, but work with other people mm -hmm. who can help you through this. And I think if you're going to do a book, you do need those people too. don't just try and do it on your own, because you're not I hate to break this to you, but you're not going to be good at everything. You're going to have to get some help. <laughs> and I just said for everybody that's not watching the video and just listening in, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting over here laughing. I love how the universe <laughs> aligns timing uh, because it's like it, uh, the story of my book is the whole lesson. Yet, however, I'm apparently more masochistic than you are because I'm already working on the next book pitch. Oh, my goodness. Okay, you haven't... You haven't learned your lesson. <laughs> I have not learned my lesson. Fortunately, it is with a co-author and it is with a publishing house. So I will never, ever touch formatting a book for Amazon ever again. That um, sounds, sounds very wise. <laughs> but it's like it's it comes back down to to the same idea of you of you don't have to do it on your own. I I spent the first two chapters formatting the book a little bit and then found myself somebody that is going to do the formatting for Amazon. And I'm like, I would like to keep my laptop and not burn it down to the ground and throw it off my patio. <laughs> so I will just outsource this and the next book is not going to be me alone. And with that, guys, go grab the book. I'm going to have to remember to carry my copy around so I actually can get all the signature because there is a lot of my friends in that book too with their own chapters. Now, if you want to go stalk Ian Anderson Gray, which I would recommend, especially if you're some way, shape or form online, which you are listening or watching the podcast. So that's kind of a given. We do have the links, as always, in the description to the book to, to easily click over and go stalk and meet Ian. He is always there to chat. Where is the easiest way to connect with you and be like, dude, I saw you on Evie's podcast. I want to chat. Well, anywhere, anywhere you feel comfortable. I'm on most places. I'm not really so much on TikTok, uh, although I still have an account. But anywhere else, Instagram, Facebook. X, LinkedIn, just reach out to me. I'm friendly and I'd love to chat. So just reach out to me. And of course you can email me, ian at iag.me is my email. Oh, look at that. Somebody that gives out their email though. Our emails are everywhere, either way. With that, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on at the end of your day. And let's hope we actually gonna meet up in person again at one of the conferences. Definitely. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. I, I need to get my US fix next year. So uh, I'll try and um, yeah, we'll try and work it out. somehow. <laughs> I'll see you soon. And for everybody watching and listening, make sure to hit that subscribe and follow button, leave a podcast review and set your alarm for the next episode. We are releasing once a week. So I'll see you there.